Hello for my eyes and welcome to the visual novel called National Park Goose. This is a synopsis. All Eve ever wanted was to protect and preserve the land, but after five years of being a ranger in Yazamite National Park, she's just about ready to throw in the towel. However, things start to change when she meets three sprightly girls who claim to represent the National Parks. So this game also looks like it's going to have Yuri themed uh, genres in it. But this should be a magical time and a wonderful adventurous time. This game is developed by Studio Coat Tales and published by Seikai Projects. Apology if I mispronounce any of those names, but I love visual novels, so let us start our journey into the beyond. National Park Goose. Goose with Sorry, you. sweetie. It's stuck. Can't go any lower than that. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. Lovely, lovely already. Voice acting. Is that right? <laughs> I click down on the switch. A sputtering rumble coughs from the window, vibrating beneath a rushing wind as it rips through the car. I click up on the switch, the window slides the rest of the way up with a smooth purr. I click down again, smooth purr, it stops halfway, sputtering rumble. Yep, there's actually a funny story about that. Jessie laughs guiltily, waving it off with a shrug and a smile. Hmm. But I forgot what it was. Wow, you, you mentioned it but you forgot what it was, okie dokie Jessie. We smack a bump in the road, the car jolts up, tossing me into the door. I glance in the side mirror as we drive away from a pothole. Every problem in this park has a story. And there's a lot of stories. There's always a story behind everything, including the park, including two possibly Yuri characters. The park makes do with what it has, Eve. We're resourceful that way. Yeah. I roll my eyes as she gives a reassuring grin, but her reflection in the stupid broken window tells us a different story. One of concern, rivers of coffee, and a decade of overwork. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes, rivers of coffee, <laughs> and a decade of overwork. Uh, there might even be a small wrinkle encroaching on her cheek for round face, but I don't dare say anything. I'm quippy. But I don't have a death wish. Well, not yet, anyways. Yosmati this time of year is a mixture of green and white, where the winter snow still speckles the peaks of stone grey mountains and blends into spring's revived trees. This is beautiful, by the way. The music, the visuals, and the voices. I close my eyes and let the whistling wind blow onto my face. And for a second, I almost feel like a little girl again, riding in the back of Dad's pickup truck as we zip down the road of Tiago Pass, anxious to explore the next trail. But right as I remember the smell of the sweet fresh air, a van speeds past us, leaving a trail of toxic fumes. The memory is ripped away. Thanks, van. The lingering exhaust resembles the similarly grey sky, and I have to wonder if a storm cloud forms but it doesn't rain, it is still filled with water, or is it just hollow? Static crackles out of a radio. Situation one has been resolved. Over. Hollow. A uh, voice announcer from the radio. Jessie peels the mic off the dash, one hand on the wheel as she shifts to her supervisor voice. 10-4, fill me in on the details. Uh, the reports end up being at 10:56. White male, early 50s. He was stumbling around when I got there. He stopped discharging his firearm as soon as he saw me pull up. Looked like he was shooting at some bottles. Hmm, I scoff. Don't even try to hide it. Jessie shoots me a narrow look. No altercation. But he didn't need to take a breathalyzer for me to know he was wasted. He 
he's in custody now. Sounds good. Get the drunkard out of the national park. I can almost see the bags sketch themselves under Jessie's eyes as she heaves a deep sigh. It's only paperwork. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thanks, Ernie. I'll be pretty late, so you can have the yogurt in the fridge while filling out the report. <laughs> Wait, he's still with the porcupine? <laughs> porcupine referring to Eve. We bleed. My teeth grit against each other. My shoulders stiffen. Tell him, girl, we already miss her moves. Hope those two lumna campers have a good dental. Okay. I reach over and rip the mic from Jesse. Wow. Your mouth, Hernandez. Or else it's gonna be your fat ass who needs the extra <laughs> dental work. <laughs> Jesse wrestles the radio away from me as Ernie crackles over radio. <laughs> Just have that report on my desk by tomorrow. Over. I'm still trying to grab a radio by the time she throws it back on the desk. Dash, sorry. <laughs> Groaning, I cross my arms and stare. Thousands of tiny daggers out the window. Oh dear. Jeez. You know they're just trying to get a rise out of you. Why do you always take the bait? Maybe because we've been five years through this process, you know. Every day, it could be very tiresome hearing the same old jokes every single time. Because if they actually cared about their jobs, they'd be angry too. I think they're just trying to make humor out of a dark situation. And not in a spiteful way, as in uh, trying to carry on with your days with motivation in your hearts, despite what you're actually doing. Not that it matters. At this point, I'm not even sure I care anymore. Wow. It's not everyone, Eve. There are people out there who still care. Who? The campers? Because I can show you some rocks and trees that a certain artist thought made a good canvas. Okay. I'll swallow the urge to s okay. That kind of stuff doesn't get fixed overnight. Some things take a very long time to get fixed. A shadow casts over Jesse's piercing glare. Neither did his fractured jaw or your suspension. Wow. I slump back into my seat. Feelings of shame or regret are completely absent. All that's there is the gnarling emptiness that always snakes up to my chest and lingers there. Jesse's face softens. The tender expression reminds me of pity. What happened to you? You used to be such a cute cadet. Maybe that cute cadet of me vanished a long time ago, Jesse. What? I'm not still cute? Not at the moment. I flutter my lashes and roll over my, well, my eyes. Normally, back talk like this would get anyone from any profession fired, and secretly, I hope it does. Yikes. It's that attitude of yours. I remember when you were energetic and determined. I remember the good old days when you used to give a damn, Eve. She shoves me. Be like that again. You beat that out of me a while ago. Wow. Jessie frowns for a moment. Then she grips a wheel and strains a smile onto her face. Her dimples look like tight drums. Okay. Then let's see if we can cram some of that back in. Okay, Jessie. By a transfer? By a change of pace. A change of pace, you say? You'll love the meadows. It's a little chilly this time of year, but you can bundle up in the cabin. Which you'll have all to yourself, by the way. Really? Because the last time I read the synopsis, there's going to be three mysterious sprites which are just going to appear out of nowhere and feel that they can have the urge to swarm my <laughs> imaginations. Anyways. You can thank Ranger Smith's Jin Habit for that. Okay. And the camping population? Jessie bites her lip. Her eyes dart across the road. Don't think you're clever. We used to visit Tuolumne every summer when I was a kid. I know they have a campground there. She relents with a sigh. It's mostly hikers and mountain climbers right now, since the roads just opened. But I'm sure they'll come piling in as it warms up. I expect you to do your job. Thank you, Jesse. Great. More babysitting. Remember what you signed up for. Trust me, I do. Or I did before I realized the park was just the public's dumping ground. Wow. That's why the National Park Service exists. We can't protect every square inch of land, but we can manage parts of it. I scoff. If only. For most of these people, the parks are just toll roads. 
they pay to get drunk for a few days. Yep. They'll sit around the campfire and talk about how much they connect with nature, and maybe even write poetry about it. If they remember about the poetry. And then they'll leave the fire smoldering, forget to pick up their trash, and leave. That pretty much sums it up. Well, I don't think for everyone. I don't think everyone just leaves everything there. I think there are some respectful campers out there that actually respects nature and picks up everything that they've left there. Jessie cringes and audibly swallows. She says at me with this uncomfortable gaze, like something ugly she can't look away from. And the truth is ugly, so fine, let her. She puts on another one of her smiles. Well, that's why we're... That's why we're here, right? That's our job. Enforcing the law to protect the land. But who are we protecting it for? I stare at Jessie with flat eyes, waiting for an answer I know will never come. Likewise, she side-eyes me, waiting as the radio occasionally cackles with a report. The same people who are destroying it. I lean back into my seat and stare out of a window. Yikes. And where's the justice in a job like that? The sun pokes through an opening in the clouds, but a sea of grey swallows it soon after. Eve. Eve. Go have a pet talk, you know. You all may be very, very glamorous, but unfortunately, your mood is killing that glamorousness. Maybe that'll perk up later. Jessie says nothing. I hear her fist squeeze after the rubber grip of the steering wheel. Sorry, around the rubber grip of the steering wheel. A knuckle pops in silence. Obviously not that impressed. Rot achievement unlocked. We pass a clearing, and the forest that's been training us up until now stops. In the distance, I spot the smooth stone peak of Labadon, Labert Dome. Sorry. Sometimes we would make that hike when I was a kid, and when we reached the top, I always felt like I discovered a higher perspective. Everything seemed so small, and the answers seemed so clear. And I wonder if I stood up there now, would it be the same? Is what I do important? Does protecting this land and preserving its dignity serve any purpose? And if not, does anything? But then again, that's like say, well, does life serve a purpose? And to that answer, life doesn't give you a purpose. You give purpose to life. By the time we begin passing families of pop-up tents and lawn chairs, the sky is dimmed to a deep gray slivers of blood orange and red glow out from pockets of open sky. We hook left and take a short beaten path. The tires crunch over the dirt and gravel. Then stop. Jessie twists off the ignition. Birds chirp in the fresh silence that only breathes through the air when a vehicle stops. We're here. We hear a cabin. Aww. It's okay, little one. We're all good. I'm out of a car before she even finishes dragging my luggage from the back. Arching into a stretch, I take my first unobstructed look at the cabin. It's a modest building guarded by a crowd of trees that extend far into the air, lumbering over the pointed roof. Nearly every inch of the cabin is built with the same sanded down wood. It's inoffensively smooth tree bark has more texture not too small for you is it no come on now you can smile just a little bit Eve Jessie walks up beside me twirling the keys around her finger I glance over my shoulder the campground is hidden behind a thick row of trees small glimpse of tents poke out behind them and deep condolences to the man who lost his life over gin no, it's perfect. It's perfect? But your tone doesn't sound like your words. The wood creaks under our boots as we climb up the steps. There's another station nearby, but they mostly oversee boring bureaucratic stuff. They'll leave you alone, but you might have to hand out permits if they're ever out for lunch or something. Okay. Do I have discretion? Not a chance, sweetie. Okay. She shows me down with a song in her voice and a spring in her step. Knowing you, 
You tell them to jump in the lake before ever letting them fish in it. Wow. Okay, she's got me there. <laughs> the musty smell of damp wood wafts into my nostrils as she opens the door. Ooh, cozy. Cozy and perfect for one or two, mainly one in Eve's case. Jesse flips on the lights and steps aside. That's one word for it. Yeah. My face betrays my sarcasm, though, as a smile creeps, smile creeps over me, sorry. It reminds me of a shoebox di diorama. All the space is utilized and everything is exactly where it should be. From the fluffed up bed nestled in the corner to the fireplace built with rock. There's not even a TV, just a rocking chair and a lived-in leather couch that sits around a coffee table. Jessie slides her finger down the desk. Then squints as she rubs it against her thumb. Okay. Huh. Not as dusty as I thought it'd be. Ah. Maybe Ranger Smith liked chugging Windex, too. Okay. Oh, dear. <laughs> I drop my bags and frisbee my hat at the couch. It misses and lands lopsided on the floor. Wow. Not unless he snuck back recently. The hardwood floor bends beneath my weight as I explore the rest of the cabin. Wondering off to expect the stone fireplace, an unburned log sits on a pile of ash. Cobwebs weave around the well-swept corners and polished floor, as if they were initially avoided. This place is clean, but whoever the ne freak is must not have any gusts. Okay, why'd you say that? A fuzzy spider trapezes from the ceiling. I like to make sure Jesse isn't looking. Then give it a tiny wave as it pendulums in front of me. My voice drops to a whisper. Hi. Hello. How you doing, little one? What was that? Nothing. <laughs> I just like how her head pops from the side. Like, hello. N nothing. Nothing at all. With a quick swing, the spider leaps away from me, landing in the middle of a trio of paintings hanging on the wall above the dining table. Arranged in a triangle, each painting shows gorgeous landscapes and scenic vistas. Or oh, vistas? Vistas? The location scribbled in the corner. No artist signature. Yosemite, Zeon, Yellowstone. Yeah, Zeon like lion. Zion. All national parks, and all beautiful. The spider crawls along the painting of Zion. Is this one lush greenery spools out into a deep valley below, guarded on both sides by fiery red cliffs and mountains? The Yellowstone painting is of a winding trail, spiraling to the top of a mountain. Splotches of vibrant trees are scattered across the rich mountainside. Beyond it, flat plains stretch out into the distance before dipping into a canyon. I almost was about to say crayon there, <laughs> and finally above them is Yosemite. I know exactly what this painting is of. You only need to take a few steps outside to see it. It's the breathtaking view of the top of Le Le Lembert Dome, overlooking all of those meadows. <laughs> Sorry. From the thick forest to the river that winds all the way to the snow-speckled peaks of the Syria Mountains. I've hiked up there so many times before, I could probably point out exactly why we went there. God, I wish I was up there now. I would scream my god so scream until I was hoarse and no one would hear me. This might be my favourite of the three, but something feels off about it. After a bit more squint and head tilted, I decide that this painting is too crooked for its own good. The frame is so off center that if there were a hiker in this painting, they'd plummet to <laughs> me. Okay, you don't have to be so narcissistic about this or antagonistic. With a soft grip, I grabbed the sides of the painting and began to delicately, slowly, gently straighten. Freak. Yeah. A sharp squeak rattles through the air so loud I can feel it in the floorboard. Shivers crawl up my spine as I need to leap out of my uniform. Wouldn't that be a sight to see? Jeez, so jumpy. Yes, we are so jumping. And hello again from the side of the screen. 
I hope you're doing well, Jesse. Giggling Jesse squeezes past the dining table and rests against the counter. It's just the cabin settling. This place is old, so it's gonna be a little noisy. Yeah. A voice drops an octave. Octave? All that's missing is a flashlight below her face. Well, old places have one thing that new places don't, and that is history. Kind of spooky, huh? Jesse, you're not helping. Not really. Yeah, not really. <laughs> the cabin squeezes again and my shoulders tense. Jesse grins, thoroughly entertained. Oh dear. Some of the past rangers stationed here always said it was haunted. Personally, I think it was just something in the coffee. Thanks. I love coffee. She picks up the percolator off the stove and rattles it around. Flipping open the lid, she pulls out a small bottle of bottom shelf gin. Okay. Our tax dollars at work. Yeah, that's what it is. Tax dollars at work and self-doubt. Just be happy we're not privatized yet. Make sure to recycle this later. Nice. What do you mean by yet? Are you saying that we are going to be privatized at some point down the line? Thank you. She hands me the bottle and tambours off towards a cabinet. I set it back down on the counter and follow behind. Question. When was the last time you were at the range? I have no clue. When was we at the range, Eve? To shoot? God, I don't know. Scratching my head, I think back to the last time I unhoistened my sidearm. Uh, unhustled, sorry. Despite the faint temptation of being surrounded by obnoxious campers, it's about as rare as an eclipse. About a year ago, I guess, when you dragged us all down there on our day off to practice. Practice, yes. She unlocks the cabinet, leaving the key in as she opens the door. A slender gun leans against the back. An off day for you guys, maybe. I'd kill to just have one weekend off. Okay, Jesse. The words slip out of her. And as soon as they do, she glances at me, then the gun. Uh, I didn't mean, like... You know I won't actually. You won't actually what? I stare straight through her as she fumbles around with her words. <coughs> <laughs> anyway... What we have here is your standard issue pump action Remington 870. A shotgun. Anyone who's played um, a particular game will know about the Remington 870. Also known as a shotgun. Yep. A bright sheen glistens off the gun, both the butt and the pump sharing the same glossy wooden finish. Fancy. This actually doesn't look like it'll fall apart in my hands. Thanks for the motivation. My shrift to a desk radio that was absurdly used by Navajo code breakers in World War II. Count on the DOI to have their priorities straight. <laughs> when have I ever turned down new equipment? Yup. Judging by the bedroom eyes she's giving the gun, I think the answer is pretty clear. Still, this is a bit excessive. I don't need this much heat for Okay, Eve. A sidearm and a shotgun. What is this? The 4th of July? Eh, uh, it's just a precaution. Hopefully you never have to use it. It's not like everyone is asking you to carry it around on patrol, which I expect you to do every day. Okay, thank you. Can I do that before sunrise? So I don't have to talk to anyone, ever? <laughs> what is Eve? Some antisocial personnel. Oh, dearie me. Absolutely not. <laughs> I will not allow you to be a weird forest hermit under my watch. You need to have some positive experiences, okay? Why do you have so much faith in someone so antagonistic, Jesse? My mind blanks out into a field of static as Jesse's tangent gains more momentum. As my thoughts wander, I start to hear more noises. The creaking of the cabin. The, howling, the howling of the wind, sorry. The actual howling. Wait, actual howling? Is there wolves nearby? If Jesse heard it, then she's ignoring it. As her ranting continues to go places entirely unrelated to my misanthropy. Or misanthropy. 
Scratching begins to scoff at the door. At first, it's as soft as a whisper and could maybe even be a branch or leaves, but the longer it goes on, the faster it gets, and soon it's com desperately clawing into the wood. I broke away from Jesse, tiptoeing to the door. Hey, don't walk away. I'm scolding. You're scolding what? A hush her with a finger to my lips. We go silent. Twisting the cold knob, I ease open the door. Nothing. Hello? I hope you're alright, little one. A yelp squeaks out below me. I look down and come face to face with the, <laughs> with the love of my life. Ah. An adorable puppy, its floppy ears barely reaching my ankles. Pants in front of me. Its small paws scratch my boots. Ah. Oh my god, buddy. <laughs> I drop to one me. My heart melts as I stroke its soft fox red fur. Aww. What are you doing here, Pop? Huh? Are you lost? Aww. <laughs> as if answering me, he gives a tiny howl, but it breaks into a yelp. With a whine, he snuggles into my knee. Aww. I'm dead. This is heaven and I'm dead. Hey, get oh, away gosh. from that. Why? Sprinting from across the room, Jesse charges at the door. I do my best mandatory expression and dive out of the way. Jesse stomps onto the floor, her boot inching across to a pup with every loud thumb. Shoo! Shoo! Get out of here! Get! Wow. <laughs> Puppy ups back, briefly challenging it, but whenever the giant, merciless boot lunges for his compact frame lunges back. Damn, Jesse. The fight continues onto the porch. With one last growl of defiance, Pup scampers off into the bushes. His ears poke above the leaves as he stalks us from the bush. What the hell? He wasn't doing anything. You scared him. Wow. Good. Maybe it'll stay away then. Jesse, what are you up to? I glare at Jesse like she's the devil incarnate because she is. Don't give me that look. I reinforce my gaze with more steel. <sighs> Orphaned coyote pup. Started coming around the camp, and Smith, in his infinite wisdom, decided to feed it. Wow. I glance towards the bush again, but by now he's gone, hiding somewhere in the shadows as the sky darkens. I'll need to set out a dish for him later. Don't! Jessie scolds me with a single wig of her finger. Wow. Did she really my, I didn't read my mind? Yeah, exactly. I didn't even say anything. Read my mind. But you thought it. And if you have any sense, you'll. She pauses, glancing up as her last glimpse of sunlight is sniffed out. I'll lecture you another day. But for now, I have to get back to the station. Okay. Before Hernandez eats all the yogurt. Thanks. With a nudge of her elbow, she starts. With, she starts for the truck. Okay. Yeah. It was asked for me. Thanks, Eve. I stare down the scuff marks on my boots, tracked with dirt and dust from all 1,200 miles off the park. Not nearly as polished or shined as Jessie's or even that gun. What's wrong? I thought you loved dirty jokes. It's nothing. I'm fine. <laughs> In the far reaches behind the cover of the trees, I see the orange glow of a campfire. The muffled chatter and laughter of the campers carries from across the woods. A tender smile spreads across Jessie's face. She sweeps me under her arm and... ah. I think I'm breaking away, but a gentle warmth is nice. And it's kind of cold out. You're going to do fine, sweetie. If you say so, Jessie. Yeah, until I bust open the next guy. Thanks, Eve. <laughs> I rest my forehead against... <laughs> okay. The edge is dug into my stern. Hey, don't think like that. I didn't vouch for you because I thought you make the same mistake twice. Okay, Jesse. You're a good ranger, Eve. If more of us were like you and cared more about what's around us and less about our pensions, then the force would be better off. Thanks, Jesse. This will be good for you. If you can straighten yourself out here, then you can do anything. Thanks, Jesse. So try to have some fun, okay? Oh, can I have fun? Okay, dokie. I grumble it out. She has too much faith in me. 
Maybe all of that was true at some point, but now I can take or leave a pension in the land. None of it matters. Not to the wigs at the top, not to the public, and not to me. <laughs> okay. JJ swings an arm around my shoulder and walks us to the truck. And besides, I'm just a radio call away if you ever miss me. I'll call every day to check in. Thanks, Jesse. Yay. <laughs> wow. She climbs into the truck and starts to up. The revving of the engine is so loud, I expected to shake off all the rust that carved itself into a bumper. Now slacking off now. Thanks, Jesse. Oh dear, Jesse. You're the very kind but very, very strict personnel that we always want to have in our life. Moms. She dropped the keys in my hand and shuts the door. The headlights streak in the night air, beaming against the silhouetted cabin. The window rolls down, all the way down, with a confident smirk. Jessie taps the brim of her hat. Okay. And Eve, you're wrong. About what? Ah, what do we have here? It might have actually been pointed if that was the last thing she said before leaving. But it hadn't even been 10 minutes when she drove back and barged through the door in a panic. She left the keys to the station on the lanyard and she gave me, and the key to the library, and the key to the toll booth for the south entrance. I swear, Teddy, with how seriously that woman takes her work, she has no right to be as airy as she is. Okay, if you say so. Hold on. What? Um... I don't... I'm clicking on different verses, though. Why is it... Oh, bloody heck. I did not mean to do that, folks. I did not... I thought they was just going to flip through different pages of that particular scene in the diary that she was writing, but... No. It doesn't matter which ones you pick. It's just going to continue the story. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, you can pause the video when you like, but yeeks, I'm not going back to it. My pen hovers above the page in... Wait a minute, can we actually look at it? Um, I don't think so. My pen hovers above the page inches from carving my force into stone. Once it happens, it can't be taken back. It's a scary thought. Uh, I drop the pen and reach my mug, but instead of the, light, of the lukewarm coffee I've come to tolerate, all that's left is a brown ring crusted around the bottom. I stretch out of the chair and let my longest yawn in at least 20 minutes, maybe even 30, okay. Damn, I drag my, I drag my carcass to the stove and pour myself the last of the coffee from the percolator. Steam rises from the mug. The coffee is thick and slices around like motor oil, overcooked and bitter. It almost tastes like it, too. But I'm not a snob, and coffee is still coffee, even if a gas station could whip up a better brew, and a percolator works as well as anything else. Besides, there's Charming Matt, isn't there? Enjoying things that are inferior and outdated. I'm forced to stare at my reflections as I sip the coffee, but it seems to turn into a foggy murk and I can't see anything. I cannot see my future. My future is this mug of coffee, as it looks like motor oil and such. It's all that oil is seeping to the surface. A gross thought, but it doesn't matter as long as it gives me the energy to keep going. Journaling is hard work. Maybe even harder than working for the service, park service, sorry. Originally, it was just a way to get out all the energy that was bubbling around inside of me. Butterflies. Hopes for the future. Dreams of making the park experience even better. But that eagerness morphed into a slow realization over time that morphed into whatever I am now. Journey became time for sharp, focused reflection. It's a good way to cope. Some people drink. Some people get high. I complain about everything to a notebook. By now, I at least have a dozen of them filled out. Teddy, volumes 1 to 12. But I like to think they all share the same consciousness. The cup warms my hand as I lean against the counter. The wind kicks the cabin. And if I listen closely, I can hear a night's nocturnal whispers from outside. 
chirping from crickets, the steady shaking of leaves. It makes me realize just how thin of a barrier from the outside world this place is. A cramped, fenced in box. The only thing keeping me from the same darkness out there is a few dim lights. A small choir of laughter and chatter echoes from outside. Reality decides to give me a slap in the face as I open the curtains and peer through the window. A group of four shadowy figures trip and wobble through the bush. The brush, sorry. One of them falls flat onto their face. They laugh even harder than before. And speaking of needing a barrier from the outside world, I stomp over to the desk and snatch a flashlight. As I march over to the door, I remember that I've changed out of my uniform into tattered jeans and a flannel. Hardly or for whatever that says, sorry. I reach over to the couch and grab my hat. Better. The brisk air kisses me as I swing open, then switch on the flashlight. I shine the beam right in their faces. They freeze like deer about to be mowed down by an oncoming semi. semi. The laughter quiets into hushed chuckles, and the only one with half a brain tells them to shut up. One of them snatches a bottle in their coat. The one up front, the smart one, squints at me through the light. His shoulders relax and he throws me a casual wave. Oh hey, are you on break too? Wanna hang? No. A thousand more of these kids could mistake me for another student their age, and it still won't stop me from lobotomizing them with my eyes. I slip on my hat and stay silent. The Old Testament fear of the Abrahamic God shadows his face. They all shrink back. Do you know how many people go missing out here? Well, what? Dumbass camper. <laughs> Lovely name for somebody that you don't know the name of. Just give him a title. Dumbass camper. I said, do you know how many people disappear in these parts annually? He looks to his friends for an answer. They shake their heads, they look back to me and shake his head. The entire group shakes their head together. I, I'm sorry, I don't... His hands are raised in surrender, the embers of a cigarette glowing between his fingers. Another question? Yeah. Y yes, ma'am! Our voices be bounce across the woods. Do you know how much paperwork I have to do? If one of you has so much steps on a pine cone. I don't know, but it sounds like it's an extravagant amount. Is it a lot? His friends nod. He nods back. It, yeah, a lot, right? Do you know precisely how much paperwork? Let's just say it's more work than you probably turned in this entire semester. Wow. Talk about... <laughs> Talk about an arrow to the knee with that one. That gets a laugh from one of his buddies. He shuts up as soon as I shine the light on him. Do me a favor and stumble back to camp, okay? I'd rather not have to explain to my supervisor how you all fell off a cliff. The two girls hidden behind the others give me dirty looks. The kind idiots give to fast food workers when they're told they're out of fries. I turn the flashlight up to its highest setting. They let out a collective groan as they shield their eyes. Go on, you heard me. You can bum around all you want once the sun comes up. I point the light at the park back and brighten the way. He takes a few steps back and gives me a gracious nod. Sure thing. Sorry for the trouble. Uh, have a good night. Well, you kind of ruined that and it's now turned into a... Well, one of these kind of nice. I Again. won't, but thanks. Thanks. They follow the beam of light back to the path. One of them makes sure to flip me off the long way. Gash. I switch off the light as they disappear into the brush of trees. I hope they all actually do fall off a cliff. Twerps. But then again, they'll give you even more paperwork. How dare ye. As I turn to go inside, a spike of movement rustles in the bushes. My body goes numb. I freeze. Only allowing my eyes to drift over to the source. Nothing. Turning around, I creep forward. Reaching for a sidearm that isn't there. I step onto the dirt, the porch creaking behind me. Then, the bush shakes with a surge of movement. 
A ball of fur explodes with the leaves, its paws scrape across the ground before skidding to a stop at my feet. Ah, it's that wonderful little pup again. Ah, oh, breathing out a sigh of relief, I bent over to greet my prince. Decided to come back, huh? Couldn't resist my charm. Wow, Eve. You have no charm. Ooh! His ears pinned back as I scratched the scruff of his neck. He almost looked deranged while I pet his goofy looking pupils struggling to center with the whites of his eyes. You're an unbelievably giant twerk. Giant? An ear flops over. If my heart had strings, you could play the fiddle. Okay. This isn't fair. I might seriously die. No. I glanced over at the empty food dish near the door. He ate every bite. He has to be sleepy by now. Just look at his belly. It's so round and cute and pink. And I'm going to die from this. I just know I am. It doesn't take much to coax him in. All I have to do is stand around and pup sprints inside on his own. Hitting every piece of furniture like a pinball. I usually offer coffee first. But you don't give coffee to dogs, Eve. Caffeine is very dangerous for dogs. And you should know that as a park ranger. Anyways, we're moving on. Ninny somersaults across the floor and my dusty laugh actually gets some use for once. Oh, a gust of chilling wind breeze past me. It lifts up my hat, but I grip the back in time. Strands of my hair fly in the same direction, but trees sway violently, shaking their branches like angry fists. Clouds curtain the last sliver of the moon, submerging the woods in, in a darkness deeper than any sleep. The cold seeps into the notches of my spine. Shuddering, I rub the warmth back into me, locking the door on the way inside. Like thunder. Pup runs up to me as I enter. Then like lightning, he bolts back onto the couch. I grab a pillow from the bed, then meet Pup at the couch. His front legs stay perched on the back of the couch as he peers over it. Oh, no you don't. I snatch him by the fat of his neck. Okay, he, he nips at my wrist, but it tucks more than anything. I drop a pillow, then drop pup on the top of it. Okay. At first, he tries to wiggle free, but I keep the pressure on his back. He eventually gets the message and lies down. I'll get you something more comfortable soon. Okay, Eve. My leg brushes against the coffee table as I get up. A stray magazine catches my attention. Okay. Jeez, Jesse. Did you read this too? A bag of lemongrass tea sits between the pages, acting as a bookmark. Did she not have anything else she could use at that time, or was she just lazy? The cabin creaks with a blowing of the wind, Pup's ears stiffen and alert as he quietly gazes at the closet door. I look down at the magazine, a map of the park is paired with the article. Every exit of the park is circled in red. Whoa. Wrapping up your stay, leaving Yazamite. Hmm? Why isn't italics? Are they going to appear? The three little wanderers. The night breezes right past me. Every time I look up, the clock has passed another hour, and the gap only grows larger. In the corner, Pup gnaws at his angle. His teeth chud as he tries to chew the fleas off his skin. I flip through the thick stack of pages I've written on tonight and wave them between my fingers. Not a bad way to break in a new journal. The soothing smell of fresh primer puffs out as I fold it shut. Okay. And yawn slips out of me as I shamble over to the bookcase. Light reading before bed is never a bad way to end the night, especially eerie nights like this. Frost is settled around the edges of the windows. A touch of fog strokes the glass. And looking into the darkness beyond it is like staring into the black of a pupil. Warmth and comfort flicker in my chest as I run my finger over the spines of every book. I wish somebody else was here so that it would it would allow me to stop talking for just a little bit. Accessing Yazamite, an atlas and guide. Best day hikes. Yazamite National Park, corruption in the National Park Service. The Yazamite Mafia. 
complete guide to Yazamite National Park. Almost every book, brochure, magazine here trails back to Yazamite. Other parks, or the National Park Service itself in one way or another, even the few pieces of fiction can't escape it. Novels like The Yazamite or Yazamite Thunder. Looking over the alphabetically ordered books, I start to notice gaps, missing volumes, spaces between books, the kind you see at a library when something is checked out. Things only get more perplexing as I arrive at the bookshelf. A giant cardboard box sits alone on the shelf, bursting with stacks of paper and folders. Balancing at the very top is a pink folder with bright bubble letters drawn in crayon. Achawi research. Surrounding the letters are crudely drawn squirrels and toothy rabbits. Some are coloured in with precise strokes, never straying an inch outside the lines. But others are so wildly scribbed in and trail so far outside the lines, I'm pretty sure an eight year old coming off a sugar high could do better than this. Whee! Oh dear. What was that sound? As I reached down to grab it, a drawn out squeak seems from the kitchen. The distant sound, or the distinct sound of bending hinges sends my heart racing into my throat. That wasn't the cabin settling. Pup bares his teeth, a low vibrating growl rumbles out of his tiny body. He sounds primal and large, just like earlier. His ears point into the air. He stares at the corner and I follow the direction of his snout. The closet. Just a skip away from it. The cupboard by the sink hangs open, still easing to a stop. The hardwood floor bends beneath my feet as I walk over. Suddenly I lose traction. My feet slide out from under me as I slip towards the counter. Okay there, Eve. I yelp, my forehead almost colliding with the sharp corner of the counter. I reach my hand out and grasp it. The edge scrapes across my palm. That was a little too close. If you say so, Eve. Very close indeed. I gave Papa Stern a look, but he still was fixed on the closet Did door. Did you do this? Did you do this, Pop? For once, I hope the gross answer is the correct one, but looking ahead, a trail of water leads to the closet, and I start to think I'm not that lucky. Muffled claps of noise whisper from behind the door, heavy breathing, quick bursts of movement, been hushing. My mind flashes back to what Jesse said today about this place, how past rangers thought it might be haunted. No, snap out of it, Eve. I slap my drink, my cheeks and push the idea into the far reaches of my head. There's only one explanation for this. One of those cappers from earlier snuck in here somehow and is just trying to give me a good scare. Yeah, that's all it is, of course. What did I tell you morons about sneaking around? I project my voice, trying to muster up the same bravado my high school gym teacher always seemed to have. You're trespassing on federal property. That's serious stuff. Come out now and I won't slap cuffs on you. Okay, the noise stops. I count the seconds in my head, but nothing steps out of a closet. Fine. Don't say I didn't warn you. And what comes out of a closet? I stomp over to the door, making sure my steps are loud enough for whoever is on the other side to feel. Twisting the knob, I pull it open halfway. Whoa. Two pale eyes blink at me, poking out from beneath a yellowing shoot. What is this? I slam the door shut. Oh, creep. I didn't actually expect someone to be in there. I gasp as a bane rattles the closet door. Another bane. As though as a gunshot. Well, that is loud then. The door bends from the hinges. I stumble back. My foot slips on another puddle, but I brace my leg. Somehow I'm standing. There's a final explosive bang, the door swings against the wall. Every light in the cabin zaps off. Electricity surges down around me. The sudden darkness forms a scream out of me. I slap my hand over my mouth and swallow back for terror. Damn, they know where I am.
I'm at now. I breathe in quick, panic bursts, then footsteps. What the heck is all of this now? There's a haunted lady and a ghost inside a wardrobe. And through the darkness, the form of a towering silhouette begins to take shape, looming in the doorway. Pop's growl devolves into a series of vicious barks. I stand my ground, puffing out my chest and sticking back my shoulders. Ghost, intruder, bear, whatever it is, it's all I can think to do. What do you want? Yeah, what do you want, ghost? I call out to the lingering shadow. The shape of its head tilts as if asked something unexpected. You do not belong here. Ghostly shadow, you have never belonged here. A voice rings out in the darkness, gravely and dry, but also light, higher than I would expect a demonic presence to sound. Not that I believe it's a demonic presence or anything. This is my post, and according to my supervisor, I do. Yeah. We do not concern ourselves with the laws of mortals. You call me mortals. You exist in the same plane here, ethereal presence. We? A dim glow flickers from a closet, illuminating the figure in blood red. Water drips from their soaking hair. They're bane shadowing their eyes. They stand unnaturally straight, as stiff and dangly as a corpse. Colorful patterns weave around their leather clothes. Beads wrap around their neck. A girl? The ghost in a sheet hovers past her, floating the air. A sliver tingles down, or a shiver, sorry, tingles down my spine as it levitates several feet in front of me. This has to be a prank. I'm getting punked. Jesse and Ernie are on it. Leave us to our resting place. If you say so. Yeah, I'm pooped. A high-pitched, energetic voice shouts out from the closet. The tall figure kicks back her leg. There's a yelp as the red light across her flickers for a moment, then reappears. No! Thunderous wind hammer against the cabin. A shout reverberates through the wood. A moan howls from a sheet ghost. Muffled by the fabric, it's spooky in the same way a child making ghost noises on Halloween is. As much as I'd love to, and believe me I would, I can't do that. I'm already on thin ice. The tall figure stutters, and while I can't see her eyes, I can make out a deep frown. Uh, are you trying to reason with a vengeful spirit? Do you have any idea how ridiculous that is? Are you trying to reason with someone as stubborn and as tenacious as Eve is? Maybe she is the even more vengeful spirit. Do you have any idea how ridiculous your request is? Yeah. That isn't my problem. Basic instinct prioritizes survival over income. You understand that, right? It's not complicated. Yes, and I'm taking advice from a ghostly elf. Basic instincts get written over by basic training. Besides, it's not about the money. You're not a very perceptive spirit, are you? <laughs> Eve is surprisingly not scared by all this. Silence! She shouts in her brooding, raspy voice, but cracks apart as she breaks into a fit of coughs. Just shut up, okay? Shut up! Wow. The bravado in her voice is all but gone. The vengeful spirit is now merely a frustrated one. If you stay here, then whatever happens is going to be your own fault. Yes. Yes, Ghostly Shadow, we are very, very scared. The red light behind her flares up. Heh <laughs> flare, I get it. Tinting the walls with a blazing glow. Pup's barks return with killing instinct. The sheet ghost ling lunges at me through the air. I spin around, diving for the gun cabinet. Come on, Jesse, come on. Please tell me you forgot to lock it. I pull the handle and the door opens with my momentum. Yes. I know I can always count on you, Jesse. Remind me to take you out to dinner if I don't die here. 
but a shotgun still leans against the back of a cabinet. Undisturbed and untouched, I reach up and grab it. The metal crushes my chest and as I hoist into position, adrenaline pumps through me. I push down on the safety, wrap my finger around the trigger. Strands of hair stick to my face as I stare down the barrel. At my feet, the sheet ghost stares at me, now firmly on the ground, directly at my sides. My trigger finger shakes. I shake. The temperature of my blood plummets, and my body freezes with cold severity. This isn't what I wanted from this job. I never wanted to hurt people, to point guns at them, or punch them in the face. All I wanted was to protect. The fabric draped over the ghost scratches back. Pup dances around his feet, his tail wagging as he tucks away the sheet like if it's a game of tug of war. The sheet falls to the ground and I finally got to see what, or rather who, is attached to those wiry, sorry, weary legs. Like a burglar caught in the act, she stands there, wide-eyed and trembling. Leaves rustle off her tiny beige dress, but there always seems to be more stuck to her. Even her long brushed out hair has twigs and leaves shaped into a reef resting on the top of her head. It must be one of those sprites, but more interesting than all of that are the pair of wings protruding from her back, feathery and white like an angel's in a painting. A kid? Yeah. And a little one at that. I can scoop her up in both arms if I wanted what to. What on earth do you think you're doing? What on earth do I think I'm doing? The shadowy ghost stomps across the floorboard, making a beamline directly for me. Panicked, I shift the gun to her, but she's already towering over me. N not another step. Her green eyes scare at me, glare at me, sorry. In their intense anger, they almost seem to glow as she grips her hand around a shotgun. I close my eyes and let my voice tumble into a shriek. Get away! I pull the trigger at once. Twice. Nothing. But that can't be right. My eyes snap open just in time to see her wrestle the gun from me. I thought they taught you goons better than to go around and point these things at people. Wow, ghostly shadow. That is part of my duty, you know. And you don't get to tell me what to do. She moves to remove the bullets from the chamber. Except there are none. And if you do, then make sure they're loaded. Did they hire you out of pity? I glance back into the cabinet. A small box of shells sits discarded into a corner. Of course, I slump further onto my back. This is it. I'm dead. Probably what I deserve. The little girl, paler than the sheets she was wearing, looks up a bigger girl. Her eyes swell in tears. <laughs> Yeah? She lets out a timid squeak and dashes behind her bigger friend. She wraps herself around her legs, content to stay only half hidden as she sniffles. I don't want to do this anymore. Zion. Zion? She brings the little one in closer and frowns. Watching her, well, watching small tears trickle down her cheeks. From far away, she looked like a creature from a horror movie. A natural blue hair with frosted white tips. Her entire body drenched in that red glow. But after seeing me up close and watching the concern wash over her, she almost seems like a normal girl. Almost. Zion? Yosemite? Just who are you people? Yosemite, then. Her head twists back to me, my shoulders tense up. I scoop back, but there's nowhere else to go. Silence, mortal. We have haunted these grounds long before you were here. Okay, Yosemite. The red light from the closet fades away, the lamps surge back on along with the rest of the power. And we shall haunt them long after you've returned to the ground. Okay. She pauses. I blink at her. She blinks at me. Yellowstone? Okay. Yeah, boss? The closet answers back. Wanna tell me why the lights are back on? <laughs> well, cause I flipped them back on, duh. Thank you. I can see that, but why? 
Uh, should they reach for a gun? One chance to take it back, maybe even Michelle's too. Because the jig's up. She's not buying it anymore. Mm-hmm. A teenager girl springs out of a closet. Her clothes are a colorful array of pest, pestle, and her bright twin tails bang us up and down. She'd be the most normal looking one out of all of them if not for the one distracting detail. Yes, her head. Sprouting from the top of her head like a mountain erupting from the ground is a giant cone flattened at the top in various shades of brown. It reminds me of a volcano from a child science project. Is it a costume, a hat? It looks like it blends right into her hair. Maybe because it is a real thing. See, she's already getting ready to flip your lid. Wow. The bigger one glances back at me. In my confused day, I completely forgot about my hand hovering over the gun. Rolling her eyes, she yanks it away and slides it to the other end of the room. She squats down with a flat stare. She gives me a flick in the forehead. A dull pain ripples in my skull. I know Yikes. you're eager to take my home away from me again. But let me sort this out first. Okay, gunslinger? I soothe my forehead while grinding my teeth into fine powder. No, not okay. How about you try doing that again? A slimy grin squirms across her face as she raises her hand again, thumb and finger ready. I brace for the next flick, but before it can come, Pop hops to my rescue and lunges at her angle. She stumbles away in time, but Pop stands his ground in front of me, snarling. Good boy. What did I ever do to you? I give you belly rubs and everything. Wow. This little pop knows these spirits. She whines. Pop howls. I think I love this little guy a little more with every passing minute. Zion, sweetie, can you keep the fluff ball at bay for me? The little girl who has since retreated to the kitchen with her other friend gives a quick nod. Uh, okay. Fine. Why you take this darling little pop away from me, though? With intense focus, she. Flaps her little wings and drops across the room, patting her lap as she calls for Pop. Hey, boy. Wanna play? She puckers her lips into whistle, but only air comes out. When she realizes that won't work, she clicks her tongue, digging into her hair. She untangles a twig and waves it around for all to see. I grew a new stick for you. Please like it. Oh, dear. Pop's head snaps up. His snarl melts into a smiling, a smiling pant as he dashes over, completely forgetting about his duty to protect me. This was a disaster. The tall girl pinches the bridge of her nose and sighs. No small part thanks to your lack of commitment. She turns to the one in the kitchen, whose head is bobbing back and forth to a silent melody. I was tired. Mm-hmm. She slumps over the counter and groans. Oh, we've done this like a million times. It's the pits. What's the pits? We do it because it works. That last guy rarely stepped foot in here after we gave him a good scare. Wow. So, they really did think it was haunted. That's because it is. Now go away. Oh, really, Yosemite? She's different. Dollface over there put up a fight. <laughs> Dollface, I'd be annoyed if this wasn't so confusing. I don't like her. Oh, really? You don't like nobody. Exactly, as a mite. You don't like anybody. She gives me a suspicious eye. The fiend is mutual. Conehead grabs the tea kettle from the stove and skips over to us. That's kind of why I like her. <laughs> She flips over the kettle's lid and holds it up to her tall friend. The tall one wriggles out her hair like a wet rag. Water, more than any sponge could retain, flows into the kettle. When she stops, the water is near the top, and the hair is bone dry. What the hell? Well, I'm glad you feel that way, even if it's incorrect. Yours and Mike, you're the only one here that doesn't like Eve. Fumes begin to whisp out of the opening at the top of Conehead. <laughs> a red glow crackles be uh, yeah, crackles beneath it. No, seriously, what the hell? Delicately, she balances the castle on top of her head. Lemongrass again? 
Please, and don't sneak sugar in at this time. Thanks. Steam begins to rise from the spout of the kettle. Flowed, oh sorry, followed by a simmering whistle. The whistling gets louder, and the arguing drags on. Pup barks as he rushes across the room to fetch the stick. The steam grows thicker. And as the noise builds, and builds, and builds, I feel my blood boiling, oh, blood boiling in my veins. Any fear I had has been suppressed by the intense need of some peace and quiet. For some clarification. For something to actually make sense once. I climb to my feet and draw in as much air as my lungs can take. Will somebody give me some answers? Eve? The chatter fizzles out. The winged girl shrinks back. Hugging Pup close to her chest. The kettle sounds like a train whistle. All eyes are on me. Finally. Now, will one of you tell me who exactly you people are? I've never heard of a ghost that can touch people. Or one having wings? Or whatever that thing on your head is. Are they costumes? What is your deal? Okay, Eve. The leader of three scoffs and turns away with folded arms. Oh, is that all you wanted to know? I could tell you that much. Thank you, Yellowstone. Hey, don't tell her our secrets. Cool your jets. I'm just gonna tell her who we are. But first, I want to know who she is. Thanks. She looks up to me with a big, expectant grin. The other two stare, waiting an answer to spring from the stiff silence. My name is Eve. I'm a... Ranger? I work here. Satisfied with my non-answer, she gives an affirming nod, the kettle bouncing on her head. Howdy yo, Eve! Nice to meet ya! In case you didn't catch it, I'm Yellowstone. Thanks. I already caught on, because you know process of animation between two others and then a third one. She points to the wall with the paintings. This Oif Angel is Zion. She's a cutie pie and I love her lots. Good to hear. Zion's pale cheeks turn red as she gives a little wave. Love you lots too. Aww. And then there's Yosemite. She's like our big sister. I love her lots too, even when she's being a crab. Like all the time. <laughs> Yezumite says nothing. I glance at the paintings and each one with a girl. And pair each one with a girl, sorry. So, are you each named after a park? Are they nicknames? Yellowstone tilts her head and blinks. No. Hmm, she points to herself. I'm Yellowstone. She backs away and rushes over to Zion, hugging her. Okay, no. This is Zion. Yep. She runs back to Yosemite and smacks her back. Okay, I can practically feel the loud slap as Yosemite knee leaps out of her skin. And this is Yosemite. I'm gonna. It's gonna take a while for me to know Yosemite. Somehow the kettle stays balanced on top of Yellowstone's head through all of this. I try putting two and two together. But I keep ending up with five. So, what are you saying? You are the parks? Her face scrunches in thought. The steam evaporating seems like it could be coming from her brain itself. She looks to Yosemite for answers. Yosemite nods. Sure, that works. All right, I'm radioing my supervisor. Uh, but why? <laughs> Told you no one would understand. I don't know how you're pulling off these magic tricks, but trouble is trouble. And you three are definitely that. Wow. I spin around and start for the desk. Panic warps Yellowstone's face as she switches between me and Yosemite. The kettle whistles above her until finally she decides to hand it off to Yosemite. One sec. She snatches my wrist with fumes from her head puff behind as I try to pull myself away. What? No! Do you just not believe us? I don't believe you, I don't trust you, and most importantly, I don't want to deal with you. Wow. <laughs> and there's, <laughs> there's Zion just smiling. My feet drag as I tug behind her, tug her behind me. Her grip is surprisingly firm with each step. She squeezes hard I can feel her fingers press into my bone. Yeeks. What if I can prove it? Don't bother. 
Just get your painting and the rest of your stuff. We need to go away for a while. Yosemite? She ignores Yosemite and keeps pulling, digging her heels into the floor. Her grunts get more pained as she wraps around. I'm oh, sorry, another round. Another hand around my fore. Oh, Please! It. Just a chance! Our conga line passes Zeon and Pup. Pup's tail wags as he looks to her, waiting for scratches and bears. Zeon looks up at me with her big, soulful eyes that only seem to get blue as she gets sadder. Aww. Pup draws her dress, her, well, his ears flop. The single heart string inside me tingles. There's that fuddle again, fiddle again. I sigh, stopping before Yellowstone can yank my arm from its socket. I just love that puppy too much. 30 seconds. Yellowstone smirks, a twinkle sparks in the eyes. Sparkles in her eyes, sorry. Gripping my wrist tighter, she turns to Yosemite. Back in a jiffy. Back in a jiff. Back in a jiff. What do you mean by... Wait, Yellowstone! Ah, uh, static crackles from my vision, the ground gives way beneath me and I plumb it down. But I'm further falling towards nothing. Hopeless dread washes over me like a smothering wave, and then darkness. Howling wind blasts through my hair. I hear leaves rustle as the air whips past my cheek. My legs dangle below me. I look down. I wish I hadn't. Far below me, a thick forest sprouts from the jagged side of a mountain. Hundreds of feet of air between me and the bottom. I'm pretty sure this is all just a nightmare. Hey, how's it hanging? Oh, shut up, Yellowstone. I look up to see Yellowstone peering over the cliff, still holding my arm. The moonlight spot. Well, the moonlight spotlights her gigantic grin. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> cool view, right? Do you believe me now? No. I flip my head in all directions. Below, I see our far-off silhouettes of other hills and mountains, all of which look like ant hills from up here. The scream finally breaks through, louder than I knew I had in me. Higher too. It travels far into the distance. <laughs> Whoa, stop moving so much. I I'm gonna lose my grip. Don't let go. Don't let go. My body swings like a pendulum. I grip Yellowstone's hand tighter. Aww, you don't like it? No! Now take me back! Okay. <laughs> she whines, puffing her cheeks out as she pouts. Jeez Louise, don't flip your wig. I'm pulled upwards, like I'm being sucked up by a vacuum with wind tunnels around me. And then I'm back at the cabin. But one feels like a hug, and my legs feel like jelly. I drop to my knees and catch my shallow breath. Yosemite, uh, Yosemite, paces around the room, stopping her tracks as soon as she sees us. You! Is your brain made of mush? What were you thinking? Yellowstone sticks her arms out like the wings of a plane and spins around the room. Zeon giggles as Yellowstone circles around her. Pup sits impatiently below them, his tail sweeping back and forth across the room. That I can make her believe, duh. I think it worked out pretty well. If you keep doing that and I can't keep track of where you're going, little one. Does she look well to you? Yeah. My teeth chatter as I try to warm myself. I'm shaking. My entire body is shaking. I was here, and then I wasn't, and now I'm... What the... Oh, God. The plane runs out of jet fuel and Yellowstone stops. No, but I thought we could finally... Listen to me. Her voice is sharp and serious. Zeon winces. She squats down and grips Yellowstone's shoulder, making her eye level. Okay. What if something happened? What if she got lost or hurt? What would you have done then? Oh, now you're showing sympathy to me? That's the first time you... Yosemite. Or worse, what if something had happened to you? There's a reason I try to keep us hidden. You know what they're capable of. What they can do. She mutters to herself. Of course, that's all out the window now. The cheerfulness leaking out of Yellowstone seemed to have dried up. Yosemite's grip on her loosens as she shrinks away. Guess I messed up pretty bad again, huh? 
Yosemite just gives a deep sigh. It reminds me of a disappointed parent. Zeon tugs at Yellowstone's hand. I think you did a good job, Yellowstone. Aww. Yellowstone gazes down at her with a sad smile, then squeezes back her hand. Well, her hand back, sorry. <sighs> Alone yawn squeaks out of Zeon high enough that only the tail end of it is audible. It looks like someone's sleepy. Aww. She rubs her tired eyes and nods. Yosemite combs her fingers through Zeon's fairy tale hair. Get her ready for bed while the human and I negotiate. Okie dokie. Thanks. That's the saddest okie dokie I've ever heard. Yep, that definitely is too. Okay, folks, so we're going to leave it off here for the time being. This is only the episode one build of this game. And after we finish the first episode, then obviously we will wait. Well, sorry, we will wait. For the second episode to be released. But I hope you enjoyed this guys. This is a bit of a different adventure in comparison to my other Let's Plays. But I do love visual novels. And this is certainly shaped up to be quite a mysterious, enigmatic one. Filled with three wonderful... Well, okay, I can't say that about Yosemite so far. But I'm pretty sure all of them can be wonderful in their own ways in the future. So... Thank you so much for watching and see each, see each others in the next time of National Park Goose. Have a good day and take care of yourselves.